Hi, welcome. And and case, but I'm here. And you might say, hey, if you are one who has paid attention to the story, hey, didn't you talk about this before? And the answer is well, yes and no, because it came on the heels of the Tiger Woods news, and so I tried to fuse two conversations together into one and move forward, and uh, uh, I thought this was so important, I think, too, particularly with what I've learned since then, that this is so important that I shouldn't leave it to uh, uh, one video or even two. It should be a multiple video series. Uh, so here it is. One moment, please. I'm just going to do a little her back. Um, just a little resetting of terms here. Uh, yeah. Clear. Awesome. Ta-da. So I did that, and we're clear. We're in the clear, and we're clear. Now, skip a ba bo as uh, Pio Pius says, whatever that is. How you doing, Kenny G? Now, for those of you, like, for example, Kenny G wasn't here in the guise of Kenny G. I think you were actually somebody else, but the whole point is... Uh, he, he, the last time I talked about this, the, the it didn't have its own presentation in terms of a story. And I want to basically put this entry in as a kind of an addendum, but in order to appropriately talk about where we are with this story and yet respect those who are hearing about this for the first time, I have to recount it. And it goes like this. This started really March 21st of this year during the Las Vegas Stadium Authority meeting. And I was really focusing on that meeting at the time. Uh, and um, uh, and what, what I found was uh, um, that the um uh, that for one thing the live stream had started early there was basically no tweets about it you know no one putting out any really meaningful tweets about anything i couldn't find any news and i thought that was really suspicious so uh i kept waiting and digging and then finally the review journal wrote something and they and there, there were additional files that are posted later um, um, about, uh, about the matter. And one of the files stuck out at me, and that was item six, and it was entitled a, a letter that was called Stadco Letter Re Merrill Iron and Steel Inc. Notice to Lean, okay? Uh, notice to Lean. And... It went like this. There was actually two letters. It was that one and another one that was entitled like this. And, and that one went, um, stack hole letter re tab claims. And I'm going to focus on that one as well, okay? So called tab claims. Now, this is the first time I've talked about both of those exclusive of anything else. And that's the way this particular episode of my live stream is going to be because... This gets to the meat of where the monies are going, or not, with respect to the stadium, and the importance of understanding what's really going on, rather than this bad news, good news game that seems to be played. There is no bad news or good news. There's just news. And the question is, where are we in the development of the Raiders Stadium? Why is it not the recipient of a Super Bowl game? the first in the, the long history of the awarding of Super Bowl games to teams and cities that built new stadiums. And why is there so much secrecy around this when $750 million of public money has been appropriated from the Nevada legislature by way of Clark County? All right? So all of those questions and many more need to be answered and so it means you have to and you have to pay attention to what's going on in respect to 
even the most minutia or seemingly minutia of news. This seems that way to the person who's not used to covering this sort of story, okay? But if you're of a background in urban economics and urban planning, and you've done work with respect to public finance and large-scale projects like I have, then you have a different perspective on this, all right? So it comes out like this. This was March 5th. This letter presented to the Raiders on March 5th, but not presented for public view, didn't find its way to public attention until March 21st of this year. And it reads, this is just Mr. Steve Hill, Clark County Stadium Authority, care of Applied Analytics, 6... 385 South Rainbow Road, Rainbow Boulevard, excuse me, Suite 105, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89118. All this is public information. I'm not reading to you anything that's secret, okay? Dear Mr. Hill, this letter is to inform you that Merrill Iron and Steel, a subcontractor to Mortensen McCarthy, Las Vegas Stadium, a joint venture, MMJV, recorded a mechanics lien against the Las Vegas Stadium project property, the lien, Las Vegas Stadium Events Company, LLC, STADCO, is providing this information pursuant to the development agreement. MMJV, pursuant to its design-build agreement with STADCO, posted a lien release bond to replace the lien. Copies of the lien and the lien bond are attached to this letter. Please contact me at your earliest convenience should you wish to discuss the matter further. Sincerely, Don C. Webb, Chief Operating Officer. So the lien basically is a call for payment. And in this instance, the total call for payment is $278 million. Now, the person writing the letter, Don Webb, is the Chief Operating Officer. He rep really represents the Raiders in building the stadium. He wrote... In this letter, he states, and I quote, that MMJV, pursuant to its design-build agreement with Stadco, posted a lien release bond to replace the lien. But the lien release bond is not big enough to replace the lien. The lien total, the lien release bond is, is smaller. So what you get is this situation where you have a notice of the lien, and the amount of the original contract was $179 million. Um, they had an amount of additional change orders at basically $100 million, which is $99,109,000. Uh, the total amount of all payments they received being Merrill Steel was $93 million. Um, so you have the original contract amount and the total that I gave to you and that adjusted contract sum is $278 million, all right? So they were only paid $93 million, okay? So uh, the, they said the current amount of lien after deducting it is, is 70 million, which is broken down as follows. Uh, but they have a adjusted contract sum total, which is 278 million, which, and, and then it goes on to say that um, as the project is ongoing, Merrill reserves the right to supplement and amend this lien statement as additional labor materials are provided to the project. So as, and that's exactly how it reads. Now, Merrill Steel isn't the only steel company working on this. Merrill Steel is one of them, is a subcontractor, but then there's another subcontractor to that subcontractor, which is Bell Steel. And Bell Steel is working with Merrill Steel in a much smaller area where they're providing what are called 66 Raker steel beams. All those are done. They finished them April 12th. They announced proudly from their Arizona office that they managed to meet their part of what they what has been called by everybody and a, quote, aggressive, unquote, 30-month stadium schedule. One schedule, I might add, that has been moved back in secret because they haven't announced it since, well, going back to November of last year. Uh, so where where we are is this that um, the attachment, they have these attachments that they provided. The lien bond uh, was only, Mortensen McCarthy 
desires to give a bond for releasing the following described property owned from that certain notice lien of some 70 million, all right? But that's not, all right? And then they say the total amount of lien bond is 105 million. They said from which sum they will pay the lien claimant the amount as a court of competent jurisdiction may adjudge to have been secured by the lien, all right? But that lien bond that they offered is not big enough. The total lien is $278 million and it's going north. Everybody that I've talked to, I've talked to now three, I've called, I called the attorney that filed this lien on behalf of Merrill Steele, Bradley uh, G. Taylor. He has not returned my phone calls. But I've talked to two other attorneys now, who I will not name, who all have told me that when an organization files a mechanics lien this early in the process, it's for one reason. They are concerned, they heard somewhere, that they may not get it, they may not be getting all the money that they're due on the project, okay? That they may not be getting all the money that they are due on the project. That's what they uh that's why they do it. And they did it very early. And I, one or and both attorneys have encouraged me to keep digging. The person I talked to most lately actually was a Las Vegas attorney, now is in Southern California, but told me specifically that, that I was on the right track in terms of asking the right questions and, quote, barking up the, wrong tr the right trees, not the wrong trees, but the right trees, okay? Because there's an issue here. And... Elihu Harris, when he was on the show, said that the other problem with filing, filing this lien is the question of how does it impact the ability of Clark of, of the Las Vegas Stadium Authority in Clark County, and more specifically because Clark County, through the Stadium Authority, is the actual owner of the stadium, how does it impact their ability to pay the bond debt service over time? And but what I'm interested in and what I have not got a clear answer to is what chain of events led to the filing of this mechanics lien this sheet at this point, specifically February 25th. That I don't know. But everybody's told everyone, everyone I've talked to who has experience with this says you only file a mechanics lien if you think you're not going to get paid. And I quote, at what you're, oh, it's not that you're not going to get paid or not. It's not a binary. It's not either a one or a zero. It's in between. So it's like if you, if I do work for you and you only pay and the work is, say, $5,000 or $50,000, and yet you only pay me $30,000, you still owe me $20,000. If I think that there may be a chance you're not going to get that $20,000, I file a mechanics lien, it's a, a construction project, I file a mechanics lien. Now, what I was told by another person, another lawyer, is that on a project of this size, it's uncommon for this to happen because the people doing the project generally have big pockets. Big pockets, uh, deep pockets is what I'm told. So this, for me, goes right back to something that, um, that was the concern of Miami Dolphins owner, Stephen Ross. One moment, please. I ran into Mr. Ross at a steak restaurant right after the NFL's 31 to 1 vote allowing the Raiders to begin the relocation process to Las Vegas. The person who filed the one, who was the one, Stephen Ross, who owns the Dolphins, is the man that I talked to. And I asked him what his rationale for filing no was. And he said, they don't have any money. Talking about the Raiders. They don't have the deep pockets necessary. His contention to whether the financial storm that he believed they were about to get into and they are now in the middle of. They have not announced any more big sponsors and yet claim to be halfway through this project. Uh, so there's, 
there is uh, a lot wrong here from a monetary perspective. And if I have, to, if I had to, like, for example, do a search for Mercedes Benz, Mercedes Benz uh, Stadium Atlanta sp sponsorship, okay, like that. What I would get back, because they're a founding partner, all right, what I would get back is that uh, Mercedes-Benz had reached the cusp of $1 billion sponsorship mark April 17th of 20, 2017. Uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium uh, completion date was, excuse me, completion date was August 26th of 2017. So by the year before, November 29th of 2016, the Falcons had sold 900 million in stadium sponsorships by that time, okay? 900 million. And if I type, because as a benchmark, so basically, if I type that, um, they uh, they they announced that by by that time. However, on May third, Coca Cola was named as a founding partner. May third of two thousand sixteen. So let's do a little comparison. All right, May third of two thousand sixteen, over a year before Atlanta Falcons Stadium opened. Coca-Cola was named a founding partner, all right? So they were the eighth sponsor of that facility, eight. By contrast, the Raiders have signed up only three. You've got Cox, Caesars, and PPG, okay? So in total, Atlanta has 11 founding sponsors, 11. So, and again, by May 3rd of this year, and that's, that's uh, May 3rd of this year is now, okay? This is, well, the 5th. May 3rd was earlier this week, all right? The Raiders only had three. So Atlanta had five more sponsors by this time. And by November, they cleared a billion. All right, they cleared almost. Well, excuse me, they cleared nine hundred million by November of two thousand sixteen. So, you, do you see how far the Raiders are behind? And now we're getting to the reason for the filing of that mechanics lien. The Raiders are behind schedule in signing up sponsors with respect to what other NFL teams have done in securing sponsorships within a comparable time frame. That's the problem. Now, you would ask what the, why that is. But listen to this, okay? This comes from a, a, a publication called Sports Media Pro. And it's a Coca-Cola that signed a 10-year deal to become a founding partner of Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And it was, it was designated as the exclusive non-alcoholic beverage partner uh, of the venue and the Falcons, as well as Atlanta United, and Major League Soccer expansion franchise. Uh, due for completion in June of 2017, uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadiums will have 673 food and beverage sale points. Now, there's been no comparable food and beverage agreement announced, announced at this point for Las Vegas Stadium. Um, and so Mercedes had put its new name to the Falcon Stadium later in the year. Now, it just goes on about, well, you know, Coca-Cola being one of their own recognized brands, yada, yada, yada. Okay, fine. Uh, what this article does not list, however, and what I'm looking for, is the total list of sponsors, because this, this beverage, it says Beverage Giant becomes eighth sponsor of a new facility, but it doesn't list the other other ones, right? So this, this in and of itself is a little sloppy. Let me see if I can find a better one. Uh, I thought this was going to work for the broadcast, but... Uh, I found it wanting. At any rate, um, the 
if I go al alone here, it says Mercedes spreads its wings at Falcon Stadium. Fine. Uh, and Atlanta's Mercedes Benz Stadium nearly the one billion dollar sponsorship mark, and it's setting records. But records aside, this is the kind of money that the Raiders Stadium needs. It's not a matter of records. It's a matter of need for revenue because you have to pay a stadium. You have to pay a line of credit back that you got from Bank of America. That's eight hundred and fifty million dollars. All right. So uh, all right. Here's what Infinity Sports Entertainment reported at the time. Back in November, we reported that Atlanta's new Mercedes-Benz Stadium was nearing new sponsorship rec records, almost $900 million to be exact. Click here to read post. Now, as construction has made some serious headway, the stadium is one sponsor away from completing the sale of its founding-level sponsors and hitting their originally stated goal of $1 billion in contractually obligated revenue. Surprisingly, healthcare hospital has been the most difficult sponsor uh, level to fill in. Children's Healthcare of Atlanta did sign on as a title sponsor of Atlanta United's FC's new practice facility in Marietta, Georgia, however. Um, and so they said that even without the healthcare component, the new facility would hit their sponsorship goal. You don't hear anything like this at all for Las Vegas Stadium. So I'm trying to give you again a full picture of what's happening. The money flows are not what they should be. I repeat, the money flows from sponsorships are not what they should be. And that, if you, if you and I are looking for a reason why this mechanics lien was filed, I think we're seeing one, we're seeing the door creak open a bit just by our investigation, okay? Because they're not telling us. Um, and it, it's, and I remember Mark Bodane says we'll have some other news soon in the future. But you would say, why are they having that problem? Listen to this. This was April 17th of 2017. Mercedes-Benz Stadium on cusp of one billion sponsorship mark. That's just five months before opening, all right? But remember, a year before that, they had already hit their eighth sponsor in Coca-Cola, all right, a year before. And then by that November, they signed up Mercedes Benz. Okay, now they're on they're on the cusp of the sponsorship mark of one billion, just five months before opening. Um, and it says uh, Atlanta's new Mercedes Benz Stadium is a sponsor away from completing the sale of its founding level sponsorships. It has not been easy to attract top level sponsors for the remaining category healthcare and hospital. You heard about that, okay? Um, and that's a, and this is, but this is a press release that comes from the people. This comes from Mercedes Benz Stadium. So they're telling you, hey, look, we've, we've signed up our sponsors. This hasn't been easy. Here's what we've done today. They're giving you a track record and roadmap. In other words, they are being transparent regarding where they are. And they had received less public money than the Raiders did for Las Vegas Stadium, okay? Um, and so, and in founding level sponsors, here's the list. Get this. This is the list. This is what this is what Las Vegas Stadium has to match: Mercedes Benz, AT and T, American Family Insurance, SunTrust, NCR, that's National Cash Register, Coca Cola, Equifax, Novellus, Home Depot, and IBM. All right. Hey, Brady. Oh, no, no. hey, unknown Raider guy, how you doing? Those are huge names. I'm going to read them one more time. Mercedes-Benz, AT&T, American Family Insurance, SunTrust, National Cash Register, Coca-Cola, Equifax, Novellus, Home Depot, and IBM. And I'm going to add Porsche to that list because I also know that I know that Porsche is a founding sponsor as well. They also added BMW. So you have two premier motor car companies. You've got excuse me, three premier motor car companies. You have a premier telecommunications firm, premier insurance firms, banking firms, cash register firms, all right? Coca-Cola. This is basically a corporate America pouring its money into Falcon Stadium, the same stadium which has exactly the same $850 million line of credit from Bank of America from the same banker, Elliot McCabe. 
and I know because I've read that he is, and he's told me that he is when I met him in Las Vegas earlier this year at CES at the Raider party for potential sponsors during CES. So that's the problem, folks. I mean, we don't we don't have to go any deeper at this point. And, you know, that's where we're at. The Raiders simply have not, and here's evidence, by comparison, all right, sign up enough sponsors, okay? That is the problem. And so but here, here's the even more dire situation. They are five sponsors short of where they need to be at this time, Right? So you would say, okay, Zinni, how much would that be? Uh, if I had to guesstimate that three sponsors were worth $100 million each, and given these reports, and I would have to say eight sponsors are worth $800 million, let's, 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 let's be generous and say that eight sponsors are worth $800 million. I think that's a bit of a reach, okay? So let's say that eight sponsors are worth eight times five is 40. Well, no, no, let's, let's say that Let's say 500 million, all right? So let's say that if eight sponsors are worth 500 million, then, then, and of course the amounts vary, then if you only have three, you're looking at 200, 200 million dollars around there. So let's be generous and let's say the Raiders have 300 million in sponsorships. But you need over 1 billion you need what you need 1 billion uh because you have to clear you have to not only pay back the 850 million it's 850 million times LIBOR the London Interbank rate okay and the last time I looked at that that rate it came out to where the stadium the line of credit was going to be somewhere around 1.04 billion in there to pay back. I'll have to recalculate that to make sure. But again, details aside from the numerical standpoint for a moment, it is quite obvious that they've got a problem. Uh, John Akala, how you doing? Um, and Peel Plus says they do have the money. And wait a minute, Peel says Oakland's going to Vegas, the Mafia, plus they do have the money. But Peel, I'm glad you mentioned that because when you said Mafia, my thought is, okay, what do they want in return? Ownership? And if that's the case, and if that's the case, and the Raiders still have these stringent casino ownership rules, the complications there, even though they have been relaxed by way, by way, via the Supreme Court decision that corporations, casinos could sponsor stadiums, right? Even then, even then, there may very well be issues holding that up. But here's something, here's what I think the problem is, okay? I don't think it's really that at all. I think that the people, legends, legends, Jerry Jones organization that's responsible for selling the sponsorships for both the Raiders Stadium and Inglewood, I believe, I firmly believe that they're asking too much money. And the reason I say that, okay, and the reason I say that is Vital Vegas put out a blog post that, uh, excuse me, a uh, Twitter tweet that he heard, Scott Robeson is his name, he heard that, he was informed rather, that they were asking, get this, $30 million for naming rights alone. All right? $30 million. So three times two is six. That means they were aiming for a $600 million naming rights deal. And apparently, a number of big players saw that number and they started... Yeah, yeah, jumping ship. Not interested, not into it. 20 million, sure. But you say 20 million times, you're looking at easily. Two times three, well, 20 million times, um, 
well, let's say uh, 30 million times 20 years is 60 million, okay? But 20 million, let's say, let's say 30 million times 60 years, wait a minute, 30 million times 30 years, that's 900 million, if it's that long. 30 million times 20 years is 600 million. But 20 million times 20 years, two times was four, that's 400 million. So that would place them 400 million less, at 400 million, 200 million less than they need. And that gives us a window into how they're structuring the sponsorship deal. They believe that the majority of the ask, the value, is in the naming right itself. But quite apparently, they're overestimating the value of the naming right versus what they're able to get. Otherwise, they would have been able to move forward with something a lot faster. The other problem they have is this. Unlike Atlanta United, the soccer team that Arthur Blank owns, the Raiders don't have a team of their own, a soccer team, to spread the sponsorship around. Now, you would say there's UNLV, but I don't see anywhere any language that says the Raiders have to share their sponsorships with UNLV or any news report that UNLV has been named as a, a subsidiary sponsor beneficiary of a Raiders deal. It would be great for the Raiders to have such a deal, okay? They should be able to tie it into UNLV's playing there, okay? But even then, here's the problem. If UNLV starts its is supposed to start its season next year, then that naming rights, that naming, that co-naming, that sponsorship deal would hamper both, would be delayed by the delay of the stadium for both organizations. It's a bit of a mess right there because it means that UNLV would still have to play at Sam Boyd Stadium and arguably Sam Boyd Stadium is worth a lot less than, and there's the problem, worth a lot less than Las Vegas Stadium. And I think we're seeing another problem. As long as the stadium's true opening date is held up and it keeps getting pushed back, it hampers the ability to sell a naming rights sponsorship because you don't, you can't, be sure when that sponsorship is going to kick in, all right? The minute you know when it's going to kick in, you can move forward. It also reflects, now you would say, wait a minute, that's ridiculous because Farmers Insurance laid down $700 million for L.A. and they had no idea when that was going to be built, which tells us what? The comparative value of L.A. versus Las Vegas in terms of naming rights. If Las Vegas where is valuable, as Las Vegans want us to believe, some, that sponsorship would have been up a long, long time ago. Instead, it hasn't been. Okay. Joseph Armanduras, how are you? Joseph says, is it the failure of the Raiders to successfully strategize for sponsors, or do you think it's negative stigma the media per perpetuates regarding the Raiders? Neither. I think it's just the, the, the simple problem is that this deals this stadium is behind schedule. It's in a, a city that is not known as a powerful media market. Okay, let's face it, it's not. And uh, I think it's those two things. All right, and I think it's that with those two things, they're overselling the value of what they've got. But why? Because it's money they need to successfully finance that stadium without going back to the public with its hand out like this. That's a problem. Okay? That's a problem. So, um, Ruben says, I just saw the stadium a few hours ago. And um, Maurice says, I thought Maurice uh, made a great point, Maurice Perkins. He writes, if the Raiders are SoCal's team, where are the SoCal sponsors? It's a great question. Where are the regional sponsors? Sean Watson uh, chimes in with this comment. This is probably a dumb question. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Only the one you don't ask. 
could everything fall through and they have to stay in Oakland? You know, at first I thought that was impossible, uh, but I think it's an open question. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I cannot in my mind's eye see the stadium not being complete, all right? I cannot in my mind's eye see the stadium not being complete. But it's not, the, the issue isn't whether or not the stadium is complete, all right? The issue is, can the Raiders afford to be in it? That is, that is the question. And if the Raiders can't afford to be in it under their current ownership guys, does it leave them open, vulnerable to resale to someone who has deeper pockets? Though That's the most probable directive. Indeed, the way the lease is structured, again, the Raiders are a tenant what the Raiders have gotten themselves into basically looks like a gigantic lie with respect to what a number of people in Oakland believe the Raiders wanted in Oakland at the Coliseum, a stadium it owned. Parking right next to the stadium for 8,000 8, cars. Revenue that's theirs primarily rather than somebody else's a partner in the city and the county, but not where the city and county is subordinate to over them, all right? That's what everyone believed the Raiders wanted. The Raiders walked into a situation which is the complete opposite of what they told us they wanted in Oakland. Is the parking, do you have 8,000 cars next to the stadium? No, you don't. Do the Raiders own the stadium? No. Not only that, the Raiders are the Raiders are the in the third position, okay? The Raiders aren't even Clark County's landlord, unlike the Coliseum situation. The Raiders are essentially Bank of America's landlord, and Bank of America answers to Clark County and the Las Vegas Stadium Authority in partnership with the Raiders. But in worst case, the Bank of America could kick the Raiders out of the stadium. For Tilla, for Tita Brothers, Maurice chimes in like Zorro, the Calvary. What do you want to call it, all right? And Maurice is absolutely right. Um, and um, and Francis race is not likely to my to the question of of you know will the would the whole deal fall apart? And I agree with Francis. It's not likely at all. That's. You know what that is? That's the nuclear option. All right. There, well, that's there are two nuclear options. Okay. The one, the first, there's there's nuclear option A, and nuclear option B. Nuclear option A is where the Raiders wind up getting sold. Because it would it would be nuclear because well hey it's the sale of the Raiders to another group person that ostensibly would keep them in Las Vegas. It's also nuclear because Mark Davis runs walks off. With a lot of cash, all right, for his twenty percent of the team. Now, that's okay, but the real nuclear option is what you're talking about. And again, I can't see that, all right. I can't see that now. Frank Frank is wrong, okay, because he wrote the Raiders. Oakland could have saved the Raiders. No, they couldn't because. The Raiders are lying to the city of Oakland. How can you help someone who's lying to you about their position, says they want to work with you, but all the time they're working against you behind your back? That's called lack of good faith. And there are tons, 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 tons of episodes in this story that serve as examples of how the Raiders have done that. So don't even think for a moment that the city of Oakland could have done that in the county of Alameda because they were lied to, all right? They were lied to, all right? And you can't disagree about something you don't know about because I was one of the people who reported the lie in 2016 to the Oakland City Attorney's Office. And I'm not one of them. I was the one who did it. And the commissioner of the NFL himself said on camera at Zenny 62, right here, Zenny 62 on YouTube, that the Raiders bore some of the blame for the reason 
There was not a stadium in Oakland. So you need to do your homework before you come here with that garbage. This is fact. The fact of the matter is that the Raiders were not honest with the city of Oakland. On two occasions, Oakland Council Member and Vice Mayor Larry Reed, District 7, told me in 2016, and I quote, he said this in April, the Raiders lied to us. When they finally got wind of what had happened, starting with a posting by Aubrey Clerkin, Clerkin excuse me, when she was the digital media editor for News 3 Las Vegas on the 28th of January of 2016, a memo stating that the Raiders were going to meet representatives from Las Vegas Sands and search for a new stadium home, those are their words, in Las Vegas Valley. That was not widely reported. It was a memo that was posted on Scribd. I, I happened to find it. All right? I happened to find it. So don't tell me at all that the city had perfect, of Oakland had perfect information and knew what the Raiders were doing. Because at that time, the Raiders had told the city they were going to take a break, sign up Larry McNeil as the stadium czar for Oakland, and then resume talks in April. Instead, they said that in January. That was right after the famous January 16th NFL meeting, okay? NFL meeting, all right? That was after the famous January 16th NFL meeting in Houston that was also at, where Stan Kroenke was awarded the right to go to Inglewood. He beat Common Policy and the great CEO Bob Iger, and you gotta say he's great because of Avengers Endgame! And, you know, hey, Galaxy's Edge, all right? But my point is, and I, I met and interviewed Bob, great guy, okay? All right? All right? All right? So, um, Sean Watson says, it's so sad these teams are leaving Oakland. Well, it's sad that they're not, you know, they don't invest in Oakland. They don't invest in the time in Oakland. Joe Lacob could have said to the late San Francisco Mayor Ed Lee, you know what, I'm, I want to be committed to Oakland. All right, Maurice gets the award for another spot on comment. He says, emotion drove the deal to Vegas. It really did. It really did. Emotion drove, the emotion continues to drive it. Everything from the aggressive schedule to the too high ask for sponsorships, everything drives it. And not only that, get this, folks, there are a number of people who believe we're headed toward a recession. So if you are a sponsor, are you going to easily cough up that kind of money if you think the economy is going to go down? And are you going to do it in an area of the country that has a media market size that's less by many times than the San Francisco Bay Area that the Raiders are trying to leave? Hell no. Okay? All right? Steve Levine asks, it, would I be a fan of the Las Vegas Raiders? Of course. Why not? That's, not? that's not the point. You don't say you're a fan. Look, if you say you're a fan, all right, and then you, and then you, yeah, then you, you know, allow your team to walk in a stupid decision, you're not being a fan. You're being, you're not being a fan. A fan, a real friend, tells the friend, what they need to know, not what they want to know. There's a big difference. If you don't understand that difference in life, you're going to have a hard life. Or continue to have a hard life. Okay? Fake it until you make it. Doesn't work all the time. You can fake it and be, fail because you faked it. All right? It's called fraud, folks. All right? Frank Ray says, we've been down this road before. Well, actually, we haven't. <laughs> you mean in Vegas? I don't know what you mean by that one. Mar Maurice says Raiders are just another NFL team at this point. Interesting point. 
John Collins says A is the only team that's committed to Oakland. He's absolutely right. And not only that, do you realize the A's are about to be the beneficiary of a tax increment financing district that they're going to use in part to build housing and affordable housing? The city of Oakland, I have said for the last four years, three years, could do the same thing to build affordable housing and get rid of this homeless problem and have never done it. Hey, but they can build a tax or financing zone for the A's, but not for the home, not to solve the homeless problem. Think about that. Think about that. Let that roll around in your mind a couple of hundred times. Heck, let it roll around in your mind once. Once. Okay? Once. You think I'm not going to blog about that point? I'm on that too. It's ridiculous. Civic management malpractice at work. So no, I'm not, because yes, the Raiders did not tell the truth to the city of Oakland. It does not mean the city of Oakland is off the hook in terms of what it can and cannot do. All right. I said it once and I said it before and I've said it a thousand times. If I were the mayor and I got the slightest hint that the Raiders were headed out, I'd have had an injunction filed. I don't, I, I would have figured out, and maybe there still is some language that could be used to keep their butts right at the Coliseum immobile. You stay there, we build you a new stadium, and you will like it because it will be to your specifications, but it will benefit the city and the region, and you will be monetarily better for it. But this injunction goes right up to you, okay? All right? All right? Frank Gray says, the Raiders left before and I watched games and they stayed back. I got it. Okay, I got you. Got you, Frank. I think we're on the same page. Cool. All right? Got you. I get, oh, down this road before you're talking about 82. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you. I didn't, I, okay. I, I apologize. Um, I apologize. Um, yeah. And so, Savage says, yes, but over the time, the passion will die. It's different when the team is far away. What will happen is... Uh, Alice Cousins says, do you think the NFL leaves Oakland teamless like they did in L.A. for 20 years? I'm going to say something right now. I think it is possible because I am not confident in the city of Oakland's ability to structure for itself a sports economic development future because we do not have the right management that's interested in doing such a thing. Our city does not recognize that in fact, the mayor, my god sister, who I'm not happy with right now because her behavior toward me has been less than stellar, and I'm saying that publicly, okay, and for reasons that are really not good, okay, so I'm just laying that on the table. Hopefully that will change. I think it will at some point, but right now it is what it is. Simple fact of the matter is this. The city of Oakland and the county of Alameda have ran the Coliseum like it is a gigantic high school gymnasium. So while I disagree with the Raiders' actions, which I might add the Raiders uh, also contributed to the Coliseum's problem, I am not letting the city of Oakland or Alia of the county of Alameda off the hook. The Raiders could have stepped in and demanded and said, we have $200 million to spend from the NFL to upgrade the stadium. We're going to spend it, but here is the performance we expect from you. Okay? And... Instead, why did they go through this? Because Steve Ballmer bought the Clippers for $2 billion. And the NFL was basically caught with its pants down, realizing, hey, look, we don't have anything in L.A. Ah! What are we doing? And suddenly there's this rush to get in L.A. Because they believe that L.A. is super valuable. More so than the Bay Area, which is a real head-scratcher, considering some of the most valuable companies in the world are in the San Francisco Bay Area. Like... Apple, like Facebook. You see what I'm getting at? So you have all these great tech companies and you're going to run away to Vegas and Los Angeles? I'm sorry, man. That's crazy. All right? I mean, you mean to tell me you own the Raiders. You cannot pick up the phone and call Tim Cook of Apple and say, hey, you know what? We'd love to build the Apple Coliseum. We're the Raiders. We believe that could be a great partnership Let's bring in the NFL, talk with Roger Goodell. Or you mean to tell me you couldn't bring in Bob Iger from Disney and create some sort of concept around Marvel, you know, and the Avengers at the stadiums and everything else? There's all kinds of things that could be done. It doesn't have to be in L.A. It could be in the Bay Area. 
make the marvel with the tech and the NFL and the Raiders right there at that place. And I don't want to hear anybody tell me it can't be done. It can be done. Some of the people involved just didn't want to try. Jeez. Bob uh, Iman says Safeway Stadium in Oakland. I say tech, all right? And the reason I say it is because, hey, look, look at your large screen television. Look at the bottom of those, look at Hulu. Where's Hulu's headquarters? YouTube, Facebook, Netflix, all right? Look at all those organizations. Look at, at where their starts were, even if they moved. They all, to some degree, generally most, point right back to the Bay Area. You mean to tell me that neither NFL team, neither the Raiders nor the Niners can't be involved in that? That is freaking crazy, man. I'm sorry, it just is. All right, so um, Rob Iman says, Oakland becoming a bedroom community of San Jose and San Francisco. I agree. Frank Gray says, uh, Emeryville turned that area around. True. Uh, Emeryville's come, become quite a heck of a city. Pixar is there. When you watch Toy Story, think of Pixar, think of Emeryville. That's where Pixar is, okay? Frank Gray says, Oakland couldn't but won't, in my opinion, and could. Oakland could but won't, in my opinion, and Frank, I agree with you. I don't think I've completed that thought. I was so busy getting to the Mayusha. Let me come back and say that because of the current political climate, the people running the city, including the mayor, which they've ran it, the Coliseum, like it's a high school gymnasium, a glorified one, they do not have the interest in building a sports and economic, sports economic development power out of Oakland. I did say that before, but I'll repeat that to make sure that it hits home, okay? They don't have that interest. Now, it flies right in the face of the person who runs the Coliseum, and that's Scott McKibben, who the mayor should have put in charge of a larger effort to build a sports, you know, infra a sports business infrastructure, but has not, okay? But has not. And the mayor herself has been, for several years now, under the opinion that, hey... The A's play 81 games in Oakland, so therefore they must be a bigger economic generator than the Raiders, and that ain't the way it works. But that, that's her thinking, okay? So you see, she was willing to play triage with our sports team. Hey, it's okay to lose these guys, it's okay to lose those guys, but I always wanted to hold on to the A's, okay? That's bad stuff, man. But that's something that's been in her head for a long time. We had arguments about it, so that's not the way to think about it, Libby. All right? And what bothers me is for a long time, I kept defending her like, ah, she doesn't really think that way. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, she might. Well, she does. Okay? Nobody likes being bamboozled. And I feel like I have been bamboozled. Twice. That time, and then when I explained to Mayor Schaff, my friend, I said, hey, look, give the NFL the land and do a, do a give lease back. Give it to them and then have them pay you over a period of time a total amount of monies, an amount of monies a total, $150 million. So you get $150 million back, all right? Heck, they're going to be paying prop the, the, the amount of money that they would be paying in property taxes. You'd be getting that money back. And then you could use the other money for tax increment financing. So you get a win-win from the city's perspective. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Because this is what she did, okay? The mayor, get this. The mayor wrote a document, all right? The mayor, thank you. The mayor would have, the mayor wrote a document in response to the NFL's um, call for a kind of response document that said that they were going to own the land. It's right there in the matrix and yet use tax increment financing. You cannot fucking use tax increment financing as a government own the land that you want to use the tax increment financing for. You got to give it up to a private sector organization so they can pay property taxes. I was trying to explain that to us. You can't do that. It makes you look incompetent when you write that. And you know what? She goes, I agree. But she left it there. And she kept with the same line. Okay? And that... In 2015, followed us all the way to the NFL annual meeting. In 2017, 
I woke up at 5.30 in the morning, she, you know, woke me up with a phone call. And I says, hey, you know what? Don't respond to this because I'm going to send you a, a letter, all right? I, which I appreciate. Okay, fine. But I thought it was going to be a letter saying, we're giving you the land. Here's this. Like, I thought it was going to be the 11th hour deal. Like, boom. Okay? All right? Boom. All right? Frank, yes, says the NFL was laughing at her. Well, here's the problem, Frank. The, they weren't laughing at her the entire time because the first time we were all in New York and you can see the New York video at Zenny 62 here um, when we had the NFL meeting in New York we were all outside the NFL headquarters all right Libby had come through the back way uh, she came with Larry Reed and she came with members from Blackstone and I was under the impression what I heard out of that meeting because Eric Grubman grabbed a bunch of us including uh, Vinnie Bonsiori um uh, Sam uh, Farmer from the LA Times, Vinny's from uh, LA Daily News, Sam Farmer, uh, a bunch of other folks, some of which I haven't seen since the Liz, Habib, you know, with LA, a lot of the LA people, right? Put us down into this um, kind of press conference downstairs at the at NFL headquarters, and, and this is on video, on Zenny62 on YouTube, said that Mayor Schaff had done an excellent presentation. So what the NFL had done is they'd open the door for her. Come on in. But when they got to Boca, then, as I say, the shit got serious. Okay? And at that time, Libby should have given away. She should have taken Scott. I, when I was working on the Super Bowl, I had Scott McKibben with me, with me. Scott McKibben saved me and the Oakland Alameda County Sports uh, Commission from, from a disastrous political event because then Mayor Jerry Brown decided he was going to leave with an additional hour. You hear me? An hour. Hour. Hour on Paul Tagliabue's schedule. I'm at the head of the table. All of a sudden, Jerry takes off and I'm in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, what the fuck? All right. So just, I turned to Scott. I said, Scott, you represent the East Bay community, business community. Can you talk about our business power and our ability to represent the NFL and its interest in the Raiders in the East Bay? He did a virtuoso job. Helped with Paul Tagliabu. Paul was mad, all right? And I believe to this day, that was a fundamental reason why we lost that vote. If Jerry had stuck around the entire time and acted like he was committed and let me do the work, you know, as the head of the thing, we would have won. I firmly, I firmly hold that to this day. We only lost by eight votes. We would have had the Super Bowl in Oakland and not Jacksonville, and we would have done a better job. All right? So we have in Oakland, we have a litany of examples of where elected officials have failed us again and again and again, but the Raiders have also failed us again and again and again. It's been both. All right. We haven't had the proper champions on either side. You need a sports champion and you need economic developer focused elected officials who really get it, not making fun of it, willing to bring a commitment to it and they're willing to get the business community rallied together like we, we've done. And we've done that, too, in Oakland. We did that with Celebration Oakland after the A's won. But it was like a little bitty of celebration. It was like a big thing, okay? Like, you know, building a huge stadium, right? The mayor could have done that, Mayor Schaaf. But she didn't. She didn't until the last minute when he had that rally at the Coliseum that I was at. Oh. Frank Ray says, is it the Raiders' responsibility champion for Oakland to be or to be profitable? Uh, it's the Raiders' responsibility champion for Oakland to be profitable, and here's why. Frank, out of the most profitable NFL organizations, out of the ones that make the most money year in, year out, there is not one that is a perennial relocation candidate. And all of them, the Dallas Cowboys, the New York Giants, the Denver Broncos, all of those organizations 
have solid commitments to their regions, and they don't go trying to run off someplace else. Okay? So it's not an either or. It's both. Your brand is tied to your civic identity. There's no way to escape that. And nobody in this world is going to tie by majority their brand to an I their 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 allegiance to a brand that is over here when it used to be over there and then it over there. Okay? Alright? So my so alright? They make commitments. They build new stadiums in their regions. They sit on the boards of a number of organizations in their communities. The Raiders could do that. The Raiders did not do that. They better do it in Las Vegas if they want to be successful. They have to change the way their organization is ran. They have to change the very DNA of their culture, and they have to understand the Raiders do. That bullying on the field does not work off the field. You hear me? Bullying on the field does not work off the field. Business, you have to build relationships and cooperation. You can't try to dominate people all the time. Particularly in this environment, people will figure out ways, even if they lie about them, to get over on you. You don't want to be there. Here's the thing. I think... Raiders president Mark Bedain knows that. I really do. I, li I, I like Mark a lot. It may not seem like it, but I like Mark a lot. All right? um, Corey Brown says, I'm just being critical. That's my right. Corey Brown says, can't imagine New York and the Yankees not working together to make things happen for a stadium. Right. I can't. At all. At all. So, you know, um, always happy to help the Raiders. Even in this instance. Uh, John O'Connor says, when Al Davis died, did everything start to go downhill? Um, everything started to go downhill, frankly, when, when they let Amy Trask go. Amy Trask, paired with Mayor Schaff, would have been a beautiful business relationship. Uh, I, I think that had that happened, the Raiders would still have been in Oakland. It would have been an entirely different dynamic. But instead, what we had was, I'll never forget it, Libby said this to me, this was September 15th, 2015, in the afternoon, and I happened to walk by her office for a quick visit, and uh, she told me specifically that uh, the Raiders, Mark Davis, had not returned her phone calls. Okay? So, she was upset about it. Bottom line, in a number of instances, the Raiders were disrespectful to the mayor in a way that looks like, hey, this is how it looks. Hey, if it's because she's a woman. You have to remember something. In politics, optics are everything. You can't just say, well, that's not what we meant. That's how it looked. You screw up those optics, you're in trouble, man. And that's what the Raiders did. You're not going to return the phone call to the 50th mayor. Okay. Right. And that's not a good thing. All right? So, um, Rob Iman says, I can't wait to see the Inglewood Stadium progress in two weeks. It topped out. That's exciting. Isn't that? You know, I got I to gotta make some room to talk about that. I want to talk about some good NFL news. This thing is like, I feel this is rehash. Like, yeah. All right, okay? But, um... Yeah. All right, folks, it is 2.03, and uh, I've got a big week coming, so I'm going to sign out here. But, uh, oh, Archive asks, what role did Gene Kwan play into this? I thought Gene was well-meaning, but the problem was that Gene was too willing to count on a loosey-goosey plan that was politically driven, Okay. For example, and it, it, it's that's a very simple reason that she got into a position where she got on the radio and said that she had the Prince of Dubai involved as a financier and encapsulating a gigantic misunderstanding both the city and the county had regarding stadium financing. 
And that, that was her, that was Larry Reed, Oakland Council member, the same. They all wanted to be the persons that found the very rich people, okay? The very rich people only exist for backing, for collateral. But no rich person is stupid enough to put their own money down on a stadium directly. You finance it through the revenues the stadium produces and or the public. The public is a the, the public provides in terms of tax revenue a firm source. The trouble is that we're in a climate today where tax where hey look with the offshoring of manufacturing, do you know where that you know what the offshoring of manufacturing caused? It caused the erosion of the desire to finance sports stadiums because the people who are most likely to support it were people who worked in heavy industry, who were making great money, where you could take one paycheck and finance a family with it, right? Okay? Okay? As opposed to having working, having to work, you know, two, three, and four jobs, including Lyft and Uber, to make ends meet. And then someone turns around and says, hey, you, know, you want to finance the stadium with your tax money? You're like, gee, I can't even afford the tickets to that. Why do I want to do that? You see how that works today? It didn't work like that back then. Because the people that are more likely to vote for or approve the actions of elected officials to make those deals happen made enough money to afford the tickets that would be made to go to games in those new stadiums. That's simple logic. Today, now you got people saying, this is, this is where Las Vegas got a sucker punch. Hey, you want the taxpayer to back a stadium that many of them can't even afford to set foot in. All right? Hey, Frank, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Right? Says, it's always very informative. Thank you. Good night, Frank. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for job. Yeah, good night. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um... So as far as what role Gene Kwan played, Gene was a champion. Gene created, and I want to finish this, I want to say this before I finish. Gene created Coliseum City as it exists today, along with Larry Reed. The trouble is that they weren't the founders of the idea, I say as it exists today. The people who originally created Coliseum City were Steve Lowe, Bob Lesty, and the late Frank Dobson as the architect. They had an idea, and you can see that idea, the origin of it, here at Zenny62 on YouTube, just type Coliseum, Oakland Coliseum Origins. You hear Bob Lesty's presentation, it's about 30 minutes. Um, that, the Coliseum I, City idea, was born in 2004, first presented publicly via my video in 2009. And then Frank basically had his idea taken from him. And the poor man lobbied to the city saying he wanted to be involved in an idea that he really did create. The city never hired him. He moved to Palm Springs with his wife and then died of prostate cancer a few years later. It's a sad story. Because here a man who, here's a man who, you know, absent my consistent yapping about him and his contribution, has not been celebrated and yet it was his idea. Well, that's Oakland for you, okay? That's what people say, that's Oakland for you. And Oakland's gotta stop being that way. So, bottom line, Gene started, took it and they, they put out Coliseum City, put out an RFP for it, and they had a number of people who bid at the RFP who didn't, Basically, they have the financing that they thought they had or the corporate structure, let alone the ability to just didn't have what it took. And so it went from, and it morphed. It went from being a stadium to a, a city within a city that didn't have a stadium. And then by the time Eric Grubman took a look at it, he said, it looks more like a land deal than a stadium deal. And he was right. It was a land deal and not a stadium deal. So then the city basically rushed to turn what was a land deal back into a stadium deal at the 11th hour. When they finally, when the city finally realized, hey, 
this stuff about the Raiders is serious. We better get cracking because they haven't really been working with us the way that we need to. We don't want to get caught behind the eight ball. Even though the Raiders had placed the city behind the eight ball, the city and the county, knowing damn well they weren't capable of, you know, catching up like that. That's why I said that the mayor needed to throw out an injunction the moment she got wind of what was happening. Didn't do it. Joseph Armandura says, I think the problem with local politicians is there's no prerequisite to running for public office. Uh, paints a lot of mistakes are being made that affect the public sector. No, you're right. And what happens is you get a group of people who you get the, you get, like you had the business people way back in the 80s and the 70s who, you know, had race issues and only wanted their white friends involved. And then we had the civil rights movement that took hold during that time in Oakland and led to a, a reformation that created a, a more racially mixed council. But over that time, we've had a more activist council that has been less trained in understanding how civic finance works or the importance of having mixed development to create a city that's healthy for everybody. And so now what we have, and I'm just being honest, what we have is the city of Oakland that has a, a homeless population that's four times bigger than it should be, at least, okay? With no end in sight. That has lost its sports teams, which are a great tool to attract people and businesses to it. And every single day someone remarks to me that it begins to look more and more like a bedroom community of San Francisco, which is why I hated and I hate when people call Oakland the Brooklyn of the West. Brooklyn is a borough of New York. Oakland is its own city. And with that, folks, I'll see you later, okay? See you tomorrow night. By the way, special night. We're going to talk about a different subject about the Raiders. I'm going to talk with a major sports betting expert. He's going to tell me why, why the Raiders, why he thinks the Raiders are not favorites to win the AFC West. So come back, 8 o'clock 